Great. Thank you. This is the last call of the year. This is a big one, huh? Anybody feel like telling me what they're going to do over the holidays? Is anybody working over the holidays? Is anybody not working over the holidays? Does anybody have families to spend time with? Oh. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Dan, are you still traveling? I think you're in Costa Rica, right? Yeah, actually, I'll be on the move on this call onto a, onto a bus from Spokane, headed up north towards Canada, where my brother's going to come pick me up on the other side of the border. Oh, wow. I can almost make a movie out of that, like smuggling you across the border. Riding the bus. Um, all right. I'm just going to do a quick announcement and then we'll get this kicked off here. All right. Well, let's jump into it. So, welcome everybody. Now like recording. I said. Hey everybody, welcome to the last community call of 2023. Um, we have a whole bunch of goodies for you today. I'm really excited. We uh, have a lot of the ecosystem uh, joining us to present and talk about what they've been working on or, or what's coming up in 2024. Um, I'm going to follow the usual format here. Let me just make sure that this is working. Great. So I'm going to run through kind of the overview and we've got um, Updates from Mateo, notice from Blade, Raid Guild's going to report some, uh, some of the work they've been doing with Sasquatch. Art is going to give us a Grove update, and then Dermot's going to kind of wrap us up from some things from the Foundation. So, jumping right into it. A um, couple of community shout-outs here. Uh, it's been a wild year, like reflecting on where we started, where we were in the middle of it, and how we've kind of come back uh, on an upswing towards the end here. Um, I just want to give a big thank you to everybody who's who's been part of the community, shown support, stuck it out through some of the harder times as we were, you know, figuring out what, um, yeah, what was going on with Pocket and how to make the the project and protocol really take off here. And I feel like we're getting a lot of that momentum coming into the end of 2023. So um, people are opening sockets, which is really exciting. Sentiment is turning around. We're just getting a lot of support from everybody. So a big shout out to all of you. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't give a big shout out to Jinx, who seems to hold a lot of the community heart and sentiment and does a lot of work for all of us. So a big shout out to Jinx, who can't be here today because he's triple booked, but um, hopefully you can watch this recording and, and get a little love from us. And then uh, last but not least, I wanted to be, do a big thank you to Jack. Uh, you've probably read the post that he's uh, reducing his hours going into 2024 and um, I just want to say thank you. There's been a ton of hard work that you've put in over the last five years at Pocket in some way, shape, or form, and um, we're sad to see you reduce your time, but really glad that we get a couple of a couple of days from you going forward. So, big heartfelt thank you for doing all the hard work to get us to this place. So, thank you, Jack. This is my tiny clapping for you. Um, anybody else in the community want to give a quick shout out? Say thank you to anybody. Tis the season for thanking. Feel free to just unmute or type it in. I'm gonna hold a really awkward. Really well, long. How about how, how, there we go. how about a shout out for Zach for running these things and really upscaling like uh, all the community comms and helping us get ourselves organized here. It's been uh, we've been doing some awesome stuff, so we appreciate you. Oh, thanks, Mateo. Appreciate you too, bud. Um. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And, you know, this is... Oh, go on, Mark. Oh, maybe that was a, a false thank you. Um, well, yeah, thank you, everybody. And, you know, hopefully this is just the beginning of better things to come as we run into the new year. So big shout out to everybody. Y'all are great. Very happy to be here working with you all. Um, we're going to jump into announcements here. We have a, a little bit of a last minute one, which is this morning there was a um basically a, an attack on ledger and so some dApps have been compromised so i just want to do a general announcement to everybody that um 
while it looks like they've made some patches, you're probably better off giving it a day before you try to interact with any with any dApps or anything that might require you to connect a wallet, period, um, just until all those kinks are, are figured out. So um, please be cautious over the next couple of days with connecting your wallets and what you're doing. If anything looks funky, um, you know, take that as a sign. Um, and there will be more announcements in the forum as well about what's going on as we see things. Um, we've disabled our own ledger integration on the um, the bridge and the monitor just out of uh, extreme caution. And we'll probably enable that over the weekend once we're sure that we're in the clear. So apologies for anybody at inconveniences, but at least your tokens will be safe. All right, so jumping in, a couple of DAO proposals. Um, we have made PEP66, so we want to we wanna reward our community moderators, Jerry and Bruce, who have been doing a lot of great work behind the scenes um, and moving them in, in, as core contributors to the DAO. Um, so please go vote. I'm going to drop these links after I'm done talking into the chat, so there's easy access to those. But really would appreciate people going in, voting, or discussing it if, um, if they need anything clarified. And then there's been a lot of activity in the forum, which makes sense as we're coming up to the end of the year here. So um, we have a new pop on the gateway demo. Uh, ben has released the builder specification. Shane has uh, made the final Dan post, so that's coming to an end here. Um, we've opened a socket, so Dan Rodman uh, and I think Asim at CoUnity are going to be doing some community analytics and working with the dashboard to give us more transparency. And then a couple of updates from Dermot. You've seen the 2024 budget and board composition update. That's a couple of weeks old, but wanted to call it out again. And then uh, has made a discussion post around updating the, the PNF board mechanisms because um, Nelson will be stepping down from the board uh, and Jack is reducing his hours. So we're just trying to figure out how the community wants to handle those. Uh, quick open floor if anybody wants to touch on any of the those Jack, Ben, Shane, Dermot. Great. Okay. Well, let's keep moving then. So, Mateo, I'm going to kick you off here as we go into some product updates. All right. Cool. Um, so, let's start with uh, just quick quick note on the testnet uh some folks are having problems with faucet uh, has been addressed uh and we had the uh first wider builder all hands last week uh next one uh we will not have a guest like we did last week um the recording for that is posted if anybody missed it and wants to uh check out um harry's deep dive into smt it was super cool um but uh, what we'll talk about instead is what the uh, Shannon plans look like in more depth as we're moving in uh, Q1, uh, which is hopefully when we'll have our testnet launched and some exciting developments around that. Uh, we have made our first deployment onto Celestia's Mocha testnet. That is not a stable, usable testnet yet, but it's, uh, it's the first step to getting there. And we'll probably do this multiple times before we get to that stable testnet. Um, but it's great to see the team actually starting to work on that. Um, and uh, yeah, so like all, all systems moving forward. Um, and if uh, maybe Zach, if you could just jump down to the extra slide that I threw in and then we'll come back here. Yeah, yeah. If... Uh, this has got like everything that closed out last sort of iteration. So if people if people are interested in this level of detail, join the builder call on Tuesday, and we're going to go through uh, in a lot more detail uh, what you know what's been going on and, and how deep in the weeds uh, we can get. Okay, back to the summary slide. Cool. Um, we told you about um, a sequencer selection RFP that we had out the last time we had this call. Well, um, we got all of the responses back, evaluated them. Uh, the team from Astria uh, sort of put forward uh, the proposal we like the best. They are building a decentralized sequencing network. Uh, they are former Celestia and Rollkit developers over there. Um, and uh, there's great, great ecosystem alignment for us uh, uh, here. So we're super excited. They're our first choice. Um, they have a pretty aggressive roadmap uh, and we will, and the teams are now communicating and uh, we'll be sharing information with each other. We will meet up and do that integration on Mocha uh, at some point in Q1. So um, we're excited about working with them. 
Uh, the other thing we mentioned last time is we had RFP out for migration. Uh, that is also uh, it's still in the works. Uh, there's been a little bit of questions floating back and forth. Um, we we're still waiting on a few proposals, but we have one that looks imminent um, and uh, we'll continue to push on that project. Uh, and then audit proposals are also starting to arrive. So that SMT uh, project and some other things that we need to get audited, uh, we're reviewing those as they come in. We probably need another week or two to really like settle on some uh, some folks, but um, it's good to see that that stuff is starting to show up as well. Um, so progress across all those fronts. Amazing. Thanks, Mateo. Ah, that's great. Cool. Um, love it. Yeah, and if anybody else have any questions, obviously Mateo is the person to go to for these product updates. So Tuesday calls or DMs to Mateo, correct? Yeah, no problem. Yep, uh, join the builder call. And like I said, we'll get into deeper into the weeds on that, but we'll keep it high level here. Amazing. Cool. Well, I'm excited to see more of those. Um, like you said, the the uh, presentation from Harry was fantastic, especially for someone like me who doesn't have that deep knowledge. So it was cool to, to listen to Harry, who's clearly the best in the biz. So thanks, Harry, for doing that presentation. Looking forward to more deep dives on topics. All right. Blade, are you with us here? There you yeah, are. Yeah. Blade, over to you. Awesome. Those some very fantastic news and updates on Shannon. Uh, just shifting over a little bit to Nodi's. I'm going to keep our update a little bit brief, but uh, last community call, we went over to Gateway Demo, and of course now it's all fully open source. Um, so you can track our progress on a repository and as well kind of take a deeper look into the existing GitHub issues. Um, our team is going to be heads down, pretty much focusing on those open GitHub issues um, for the next one or two weeks uh, before the holiday season enters. And then as well, a uh, little final update on our website for our D apps uh, on this call as well. Uh, we released a new feature for API keys. And so uh, you can create an endpoint and protect that with additional API keys uh, with whitelisted IP addresses and uh, domains. Yeah, that is Oh, one last update as well, which is not a bullet point here. Uh, we recently made a change to uh, the public pocket RPC endpoints as well. Uh, we increased the rate limit from 25 requests per second over to 40 requests per second. Uh, a, a driving factor for that was that we wanted to make sure that users were adequately getting the enough requests per second if they had like a very large wallet, like for example, MetaMask, for example, may make a lot more requests if you have a large wallet on Polygon. Um, and so that's been increased. And so the network traffic is likely going to increase by uh, projections is about like 15 million more requests a day. But yeah, that's all awesome. the updates I have on Nodis. Um, it's been a fantastic year. Um, it's amazing to see the progress from, you know, just thinking about reflecting back from 2022 of December to now. Um, it's been a great ride. Yeah, I can't wait for more to come. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Blade. And we can't wait for more to come, too. Um, been really, really glad to have you on board and, and continuing to build on top of the network and show up and do more work for us. So thank you for all that you've done and thank you for, for coming to these presentations. All right. Mr. Sasquatch, you want to give us the Raid Guild report? Yeah, definitely can. Um, first off, uh, thanks actually, for inviting me into the call. Um, and then a group thank you to the Pocket Foundation, the Pocket Network, and everything you guys have been working on doing. It's been really cool to uh, get to work alongside with you guys on some of these big projects. Um, so just a little... A little background for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Raid Guild is a uh, decentralized dev shop. Um, it was started by a group of devs who wanted some help um, with kind of the client side aspect of freelance. And so they gathered a group together in 2020 after East Denver and have been slowly morphing and changing along that path since then. Um, and we basically focus on hacking on projects and then also um, another thing that's arisen is an onboarding that we do for getting people exposed to work in Web3. So as a slight uh, CDN aside, if you have people in your 
networks that want to try freelancing or are interested in doing some Web3 freelance work, um, Ray Guild is always uh, looking for more people to come in and help out. On to what we've been doing with uh, PNF. Um, so the first started off with uh, German approaching us to work on Wrap Pocket. Um, started with just the bridge and the token, and then evolved to add the staking nap and the LP pool. Um, it's been really cool to see that working. I've used it myself. It's pretty fun <laughs> um, and cool to see like uh, the access to the rest of the Ethereum ecosystem and the market there for the pocket. Um, then followed that up with doing some work on um, the Pocket Network uh, website, doing branding refresh and some site restructuring, working closely with ads, of course, and Zach as well. Um, and that's been, yeah, very, very fun to do as well. And a slight little thing, which I don't even know if it's out yet, but um, worked with creating a bunch of badges for Ben or for the Gred badge system through Mr. Ben. And then the last thing is uh, doing some RPC research. Um, so this is was originally for uh, directed at building an, uh, a tool um, to record and display and um, I guess host analytics data from all the RPC servicers out there. Um, it seems that there's another uh, group that is proceeding with this tool and far ahead of us. So changing the scope a little bit to instead focus this on getting some more user information um, so that the marketing efforts of Pocket can be informed. And just blazing through, the last thing is um, this gateway project, um, looking to see if there is a place for us to join the gateway stack and or not the gateway stack, sorry, the, the gateway providers. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Is there anything else I could shed light on? No, I think that's that's everything. Um, and I just want to do a, a really big shout out. I feel like you all have uh, come in and done a lot of great work for us and stepped up to, to fill a lot of gaps that we've needed to. So um, a big thank you for all the work that you've done. Obviously, we're seeing tremendous... Um, Tremendous results from having Wrap Pocket and what it's enabled the ecosystem, and um, you know the badges which are not out yet are part of the new governance system, which um, I think look fantastic. So I'm really, I just generally am excited with all the work that you've done, and the brand refresh was also all you all. So the new colors and the kind of the separation from, uh, we'll call it like Pocket V0, has been really, I think, really well received and really nice and clean. So thanks everybody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe just to quickly jump in. Uh, and hey, Ian, um, it's awesome to have you on the call. Yeah, I guess that'd just be interesting because I don't think I've actually asked you directly since you've been working with us. Of, uh, I mean, what, maybe anything surprising that stood out to you about the community or even in terms of, I guess, expectations versus reality in terms of your work so far with, I guess, you've been working directly with PNF, but also different members of the community, and you've actually seen quite a lot of what we're doing and what we care about. So yeah, be interested to see if you have any particular take on what we're doing or how we're doing or anything about the community that comes to mind. Yeah, that's actually something I wanted to touch on too, Jeremy. Thanks for pro uh, prompting. Um, what I wanted to say is that uh, it's interesting to see and work alongside a group that's so well, um, I guess, driven and organized while still maintaining the uh, like the decentralized community driven um, structure that you guys have here at pocket, right? You have like some major drivers, uh, you know, in the different silos or like organization or marketing or product or blah, but you also have a ton of community members across, you know, uh, your organization that are contributing in different small ways as well. And it's really cool to see kind of the group action, taking big strides. Um, it seems like a hybrid, a really cool hybrid between like, like true DAO and also like, um, you know, foundation structure. Um, and I relate that to what 
I've experienced working with Ray Guild and being a part of Ray Guild is Ray Guild is very much like, you know, an amoeba, uh, like very, de very decentralized and very much like, um, you know, people pick up and run with things as they find them. So it's been cool to work alongside Pocket on all these projects because it's also kind of giving us like, uh, what's the word? Like kind of pressure to like evolve and be better and like work more, um, more efficiently as well. So I think that's the cool kind of thing with having two groups nudge into each other is, um, you know, getting to learn from another group in the ecosystem. So that's my, my take. And thanks again for, you know, the opportunity to work alongside with you guys. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, sentiment right back at you. Um, and I appreciate that we look so well organized from the outside. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but um, appreciate that. Uh, we're putting on a good show. All right. Yeah. And I'm going to, sorry, I'm just going to uh, say goodbye as well, because I got to jump over to our community call. But it's been really cool to sit in on this and um, look to do it again in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we'll give you a, a spotlight when you decide to open your gateway. So, um, 2024. Yeah. Thanks, Happy Ian. New Year, buddy. Bye. Happy holidays. Um, cool. Okay. Well, thank you, Ian. Uh, Art, I think I saw you. Yeah, there you are. Art, I'm going to pass it over to you if you want to talk about some Grove stuff. Sure. Can you hear me? Sure can. Awesome. Uh, so, hi, everyone. I have two slides, so just a heads up. I'm trying to give a more transparent and encompassing update on the year, uh, given that I gave two quarterly updates earlier in the year, but then haven't for the last six months. Um, so this will kind of be 15 minutes or less of going over what's been going on at Grove, formerly PNI. Um, so I'll start with uh, the following. Um, so we finished our fundraiser, as we announced. We raised uh, $7.88 million. Um, so we raised from a bunch of different um, partners, uh, we raised from Avon, which is known as, uh, which is a subsidiary of Fidelity. It's their Web3 subsidiary. Uh, raised from Cogitent, which has invested in a ton of Web3 companies. If you look at their portfolio, Druid and Tampa Bay Ventures are both um, uh, Tampa, Florida based and have been long supporters of uh, Pocket. And then Mechanism is a former token holder and now equity holder and placeholder ventures. Placeholder Capital is a massive firm in this industry as well. Um, they've been a token holder and now an equity holder as well. So. Uh, a lot of big names. Uh, we made the podcast route uh, for some various podcasts as well with this raise. So it was really nice to see this get picked up after the um, Coindesk exclusive and a uh, hat tip, I think, to Ads and Gabby for putting that together. So thank you. Um, we now have a board of directors. Um, so we just like Dermot was speaking on the foundation, they have their own board. We have our own board for growth, kind of uh, pushing through. Um, what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. We meet monthly at the end of the month. Um, it's composed of Mike, myself, um, Lasse, who's the founder of 1KX, which is a massive token holder, uh, Pocket, um, uh, Druid, because, and Tampa Bay Ventures. There's about eight of us uh, between observers and board holders, um, four voting members at the moment. We have an open seat for a future fundraise. Um, so, as well, just like Pocket, we've also reimagined our brand, right? We renamed ourselves from PNI to Grove, and I'll kind of get into why we did that on the next uh, next slide when we look at, talk about the future. Uh, but this year, we basically we had a lot of improvements to the overall product, right? Better uptime, uh, enhanced how we do uh, how we funnel and uh, deal with RPC requests, uh, which is our bread and butter. Um, uh, improved data observability, though it might not be appearing on Pocket Scan, we do have a lot better data, and we are working on getting real-time data out there. Um, we have enterprise team access management, um, so we allow more enterprise clients to have multiple members log in and manage their accounts. Uh, we had a mi migration, a massive migration, where we migrated from, um, uh, what's it called? Um, from app on a, an account to doing everything at the account level, which makes billing much easier. Uh, a few members of that team are on this call. Um, I specifically want to just call out Gabby and Robbie, and I'm not sure if Zane or uh, is here. But basically, the team is here. They did an amazing job um, when it comes to the front end work 
and the product work overall. Um, and the whole team obviously has been doing a killer job, but these two people are here on the call, so I just want to call them out. Um, we've signed 30 enterprise, well, uh, we signed another one this morning. So we signed 31 enterprise deals, the vast majority of which were in the last 60 days. Um, some of these are net new names to all of you. I'm not sure if I can say them out loud, but at this point, honestly, I don't really think it matters. But we've signed Aave and Dodo. Um, so Aave is the big lender on, on Ethereum. And the cross-chain Dodo is a massive exchange. Uh, Dex, uh, Guild, I think is what we use now. For, we're going to be using for um, uh, the digital identity stuff with the foundation. So I think we're processing a huge chunk of their requests. Uh, we obviously have the Inferior deal. We signed Pancake Swap. We signed Trader Joe, which is a big AVAX. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, Dex. We signed. We have Trust Wallet. We have Wallet Connect. We have Zarian as well, which I think it might be the first time we're saying that out loud. They just started sending traffic yesterday. Um, we have a lot more. Um, so uh, these are all deals that are a mixture. As you can see, it's kind of a mixture of wallet providers or Dexes. Um, basically, any multi-chain app is going to want to use us because we have so many chains. Um, so this is just proof. That all the work we put in this year, um, we has helped close all of these deals. Um, so you know, kudos to the team as a whole being able to um, build out a robust enterprise grade product, and kudos to the node runners for servicing this product for servicing the traffic. Thank you all around. Um, this year we launched eighteen chains. We also sunset a couple, but we um, we've launched a lot. We also launched eighteen last year. So I know that number has been between like thirty and forty five the last two years, but we've just been cycling through chains as the companies either die or traffic dies off or, um, or they get sunset. Um, you know, so as an example, uh, I think we, we shut off Bitcoin because we weren't getting traffic. We shut off fellas because they died. Um, but it, in that vein, we also launched things like uh, Arbitrum. We're also start, going to start launching a few new chains uh, next week. So uh, Optimism Archival, Avalanche Archival, and Radix are coming next. Um, you know, their specific clients are asking for this. Uh, Fair Joe is becoming a much bigger client of ours. They are big Avax. Uh, they're big on Avalanche, obviously. So they're looking for more historical data. So they want Avalanche Archival. So um, just heads up to you all. Uh, we also have a RFP process in place that Fred uh, has put in in our Discord, the Build with Grove Discord, where you can apply if you're a node runner to host these nodes, the at least the Bootstrap nodes for a month. Until there's node adoptions, there's a little extra way for you to make cash. This process has been pretty quick and amazing. We've always had at least five or six people apply, um, and the rates have always been... It was interesting to see how people come in and what the rates are, um, and we're happy to continue this process moving into the next year. But we also do have a potential pipeline uh, of new chains. There's no guarantee we're going to launch these. It's just kind of where our head is at. So Celeste is one Olshansky is pushing for, I'm pushing for Tron, and we have a potential deal we're going to try to sign uh, hopefully before the end of the year that is requesting Zcash. Um, so just a heads up, like these may be coming. Uh, no promises or guarantees there. Um, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll get into more about what it takes to launch a chain on the next slide as well. Um, lastly, we processed just under 400 billion requests um, this year. Um, it's pretty insane. Obviously, we've had um, a reduction in traffic by getting rid of public RPCs on uh, Grove's side. Um, to give you an idea, the public RPCs cost us anywhere from 25 to 40 grand a month. Um, depend, and that doesn't include the token burn. The token burn was an extra four to five figures amount in cash represented as tokens that we had to pay. So it was really non not really not profitable to run that. And that traffic never converted. Um, but now we've been running this for about six weeks. And when we did an assessment at the beginning of December, um, for the first four weeks, we saw that 75% of the traffic was paid, uh, which is great, which means the other 25% of the traffic that we're getting is just free tier traffic. Um, so I, I don't know if you can deduce how many customers that is or not. Um, I can tell you we have tens of thousands of customers. Obviously, many, 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 many are on the free tier or on the smaller end. Uh, what else I'd like to say is that, um, oh, I just slipped my mind. <laughs> Sorry, it's going too fast. Um, things are moving in the right direction, I guess, is kind of what I, I, want, I want to say here. Um, I think this was the right call to make. Um, you know, one of the, uh, we're happy to have another gateway in the system. I was talking to Blade on the side. And one of the, you know, there were many reasons we got rid of public RPCs, but one of the things we thought would be useful was having a stream of traffic going to Blade's gateway, um, to the Nodi's gateway, so they can process real data and work on their quality of service. Um, so 
Uh, that turned out to be, well, obviously it would have been great if we could have moved it um, piece, uh, right away, but we weren't able to. So, you know, it is what it is, but I'm just glad that we have two gateways servicing traffic and hopefully Raid Guild could become a third, uh, third gateway in the near future. Lastly, token buybacks. Um, so we've been doing token buybacks um, because that's part of the economic flywheel, right? We don't have on-demand. We don't have burn uh, at the on uh, for app stakes. Um, so what we do is we get charged every every week um, for a past looking seven day period for the amount of uh, relays that have gone through our gateway, and then we pay for that uh, up to a dollar amount in tokens for what the average price of the token was over that period of time. Um, and then we, to fulfill that, we have to buy tokens ourselves. Uh, to fulfill the fly, we have to buy tokens. Um, why is because we would, uh, otherwise we'd be burning our treasury. Um, so right now we have been buying tokens. We are not completely, we were way over 100% um, in, in buying back. We are a little bit under right now, but um, I'm trying to catch dips when I can um, to take care of that. We buy wrap pocket usually at this point, uh, just to show um, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, just to show some demand side pressure on on that, but we don't we don't do it stochastically. We're not doing it on a daily basis. We do it as we can. A lot of it depends on revenue coming in and when our customers pay us. But we are fulfilling the economic flywheel from the growth side. Uh, I think that's the current state of things. Uh, you want to go to the next slide? All right, future state. I'm going to just be a little quick on this because a lot of this is still slightly. We're figuring this out, um, but kind of give you an idea of where we're going. Um, so obviously, we are uh, we we house the protocol team that's building Shannon, and they're making great great progress. Last I heard, like a week or so ago, uh, goal for testnet what I think was to launch next month. Mateo can correct me if I'm wrong. Feel free to also interrupt if I am. And mainnet I think was pushed into either the end of Q1 or early Q2. Um, and we already have at least one of our backend engineers working with integrating our existing portal into working with uh, with the testnet. So that is something um, uh, that we're actively spending cycles on to make sure there's seamless transition from, from Morse to Shannon, V0 to V1. Um, so we're, uh, yeah, so that's that. So for the rest of the people that are on the company, uh, at the company, so the folks that are not the protocol team, and I think at this point, I kind of want to take a quick aside. Um, two years ago, the company was about 20 people, um, and we grew to 80 because we were, managing a lot right we had the portal and we had all the sdks and the wallet and the testnet and the faucet and ledger support wrap pocket and node running and a few other items and over the course of the year and the way the market evolved we had to focus so we gave a, we either dropped a bunch of projects or we gave it away to the community so we went back down to about 23 24 people um and um in that time frame um we uh, we learned a lot about us as a company. We also learned that a lot of us here are <laughs> masochistic. It's become a core value. We love working here. It's been a crazy year, though, but it's like we're all very wartime here. So it's nice to kind of be able to take a look back and be like, hey, this was all worth it. But we also realized how we should focus and what we should focus on and where we're going. And basically, Grove um, um, is looking to be what Gabby, our head of product, calls the performance layer for permissionless protocols which means that we're going to be the layer that sits on top and provides the appropriate quality of service for things like RPC on Pocket Network or working with um, uh, introducing, working with processing, uh, dealing with AI inference. So the idea of sending a request to something like Llama or some other open source LLM and being able to have nodes send back a response and trying to figure out how to be that layer in between. For the, that, uh, that type of for decentralized protocol around AI or for compute or for other use cases. So that is one way for us um, that we're looking into the future of the company. It's kind of part of Mike's big vision um, uh, is how we're going to go. So it's become the company's vision as well. We've all kind of like red pulled ourselves into it over the last 60 days because we've started to believe it, seeing a bunch of signal in the ecosystem around it. Um, other things we're going to be working on is quality of service. That's our bread and butter, right? So that we are to be the performance layer basically means we have to have high quality of service. Um, when we launch a new chain, we need to add quality of service. We don't have it built to a lot into a lot of chains right now. Um, we are seeing persistent issues with things like Solana Custom, but we're also seeing that we have four or five apps that are pushing more than 10 million requests per day through um, through Solana Custom when we were, right, we just launched it a few weeks back. 
So we are trying to prioritize making sure our node runners are properly configured, you know, so we you know, trust but verify. Um, it's just taking longer than we expect it to do, but we hope to get it this out the gate for as many changes as possible in Q1. And then as, you know, app chains become a thing and start launching, we'll be able to make quality of service uh, faster and faster uh, around new chains. We also have a plan for real-time data, uh, just showing metrics publicly and getting beta either to client, either to pocket scan or internally in our dashboard. Uh, again, no timeline on that, it's something that's gonna happen. There's ideas of endpoint simplification. Right now for certain chains, we have like uh, debug and trace and archival and just the pruned uh, nodes. And that's kind of difficult to deal with. And sometimes the customers use the wrong chains. Uh, in an ideal world, it would be nice to just have one endpoint and you prop pass some um, configuration parameters that, um, that are specify where the request is going or the portal can inference based on the type of request. But that is also on its way, that's like, Way down the line, but the idea is there might be some endpoint simplification coming along later next year. There's also support for WebSockets, um, which has been long asked for by our uh, many of our clients. And then there's also unrolling batch requests. So sometimes our node runner, our demand side clients, they send requests in batches, but the nodes block them because um, they don't want to process that many requests for a little reward. So the idea there is to get a bunch of batch requests to come in and then unroll each request uh, individually and then roll back the response uh, appropriately so they get the response they're expecting, but the node runner gets paid for every single request under the hood. So we're looking to do that as well. Um, so I already said the, you know, the going tall. So the going tall idea is um, we kind of double down on Grove and we make ourselves, we expand across a bunch of different uh, protocols or innate, help enable pocket network to um, process more uh, types of requests, and I know we have the proposal around AI right now, and that's the, the you know that's the big thing that we're thinking about today is enabling AI inferencing on Pocket. Um, there's also the going wide approach, which is similar to Nodi's, which is how do we enable other gateways. We're seeing from conversations that we've had that a lot of folks or existing or new clients um, would like to potentially run requests directly. Uh, would like to have more control over how they run requests or bring more demand to themselves, but without having to write all the code for the front end or the user management themselves. So we're looking to open source some quality of life APIs or partnership APIs to potentially um, enable other gateways to kind of begin getting bootstrapped into going to um, Pocket Network directly, but are not quite ready to do that yet. They still want to have us under the hood. Um, so we're just thinking about how best to do that now as we have had four or five conversations where existing or new customers are looking to get a little more control over their RPCs. So that's kind of where we are now. Uh, two final updates I didn't get to right here. Um, one, um, update number one is, what I'd like the community to understand is whenever we sign a deal, um, and I've said it on Telegram before, it takes weeks, if not months sometimes, for traffic to start moving through. Some folks, but rare, will do it within a week. Some take a long time. The Zarian deal, for instance, has been signed for over a month and we just got traffic yesterday. Um, it, it's just, it's just, just the nature of the beast. Um, and they're, cause they're, these different customers want to send different traffic to us versus other providers, depending on the chain we support or the configurations of chains we want to support. Also, so there is some understanding. We try to sign deals that are, when we do an enterprise level deal, we try to sign it to be at least 5 million requests per day. But even when that happens, some of those clients will only send one, two or 3 million requests, or maybe that is their entire scope, or maybe their traffic is very spiky. While I don't want to like reveal what every client ha ha is sending us, I, cause it's, I shouldn't. Um, I would say most clients are in the low millions or low tens of millions, right? So whenever we sign a deal, we're not going to get hundreds of millions right away. That's very, very, very rare. So I want people to kind of temper their expectations on, even though we have 30 clients that we've signed that are net new on top of what we had before, not all of them are sending traffic yet and not all of them are sending tens of millions or hundreds of millions of requests. That's obvious from the data you see on Pocket Scan. And it takes time to ramp up. And then sometimes we have days where a client will ramp up and another client will ramp down and we end up net even, which is annoying because we'd like to go up and to the right, but that's just, just the way it is. Um, and the other thing is, uh, we do have another big partnership that we signed a long time ago, um, but it is so big that the team take, it takes a long time to get their marketing um, in place. Um, people have hinted at it. I'm not confirming it, 
I'm just saying we have one. The announcement is not happening this year. Um, so I just want everyone to give Jinx a break. Um, we assumed it was going to be able to happen next week, but we can't. Um, there's just some some things that got in the way, logistical things that have gotten in the way. Nothing affecting the deal at all. It's just big company moves slowly. So yeah, that's it. That's the update about growth. Any questions? If we're taking questions now. We can take questions. Uh, thanks, Arthur. Holy crap, that was one heck of an update. Does anybody have any questions for Arthur? How are you feeling today, Arthur, compared to the start of the year or 12 months ago? So start of the year, um, so we've had some turnover um, at the company, as I mentioned, and some at the leadership level. And about 52 weeks ago, I was on vacation with my kids and I got a call from one of our former colleagues saying that, hey, we're running out of money. And up until three weeks ago or four weeks ago, it has been unbelievably stressful, like unbelievably stressful. Right now, it's phenomenal. I feel like I can sleep a little easier, but I also feel a little jittery because I don't know what to do with myself sometimes um, because things have calmed down a little bit. Uh, I'm unbelievably grateful to the team for everything that they've had to pull through, all the ridiculous decisions that they've had to make. Um, but I'm very happy right now, right? I wouldn't have put myself through this, nor everyone else here would have put themselves through it had they not believed in what we were building and seen the signal that we began seeing. But we have a wonderful team, um, and I'm very proud to be part of it and to be working here. So thanks for asking. I feel great right now. and excited to go into a holiday where I could potentially relax a little bit. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Arthur. Um, really appreciate the update today. Yeah, and if anybody has, I mean, obviously you have your own server, but if anybody has any other questions, definitely feel free to DM Arthur or reach out to us. We can we can make sure you get routed in the right direction. But um, I'm excited. 2024 is going to be a huge year. It feels like foundations really in place. Uh, we get to keep growing and expanding. So congratulations to you and your team. And let's keep going here. So I think... Last but not least, the one and only Dermot. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Um, cool. I think we're going to do something a little bit different, given that it's holiday season and all that. So it's been to be quite chaotic. So uh, kind of stay with us and make, make the most of it. But if you want to go to the next slide, Zach. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're going to try a quiz. Um, and the rules are pretty short and sweet. It's open to everyone on the call that isn't a member of PNF. And I think to make this as interesting and also so it doesn't drag on for, for so long, and there are too many questions about who won, etc. I think we'll have it as a quick fire round. So there'll be a series of, I think, nine questions. And after I ask each question, I think we'll give 10, 15 seconds for everyone to just basically write what you think is the is the right answer and the first person within that period to get the right answer or as close to the right answer as possible will get a point and in terms of the giveaway um cue cheesy joke upcoming um given that it's a holiday season we thought what better present to give away than something that's already wrapped so we plan to give away a thousand wrap pocket to the winner of this uh, funnel competition, funnel quiz night. So um, I think without further ado, I think let's just let's jump in. Great. Thank you, <laughs> just just so, so I can I clarify. I I yeah. yeah. Just so I can clarify, this is for people who are not part of the foundation, and you want people to type their answers, right? Exactly. Yeah. So type your answer. Finger on the yeah finger on the buzzer. Essentially, or actually finger on the keyboard. Uh, first correct answer uh, wins the point, basically. And if there's no correct answer in that first kind of mm. 10, 15 seconds, whoever gets closest to it, in our extremely subjective opinion, will get that point. So um, we're probably <laughs> going to have to top this up after, after the call and um, get back to whoever's the winner. So we'll kind of follow up to get wallet addresses, etc. cetera. But um, yeah, for now, just I think get ready and uh, jump in to participate and make the best, make the best of it. 
All right, Derek, we're waiting for you to cue one. me up. Okay, question one. So I thought you might like this one, Harry. Um, <laughs> well done, Harry. Uh, yeah, what was the age when Harry, when he made his first PR to the Pocket Network repo? And um, given that he's already won that, <laughs> I think we can actually go to the second question already. That was a very quick, quick fire first question. Um, ultimately, this is subjective, and Harry, you can't actually win this question, but you can tell us how, what age you do feel 12 months later after all of that amazing stuff that you've been up to, um, submitting a bounty, being part of Grove, being a contributor. Um, so yeah, feel free to unmute Harry if you want to tell us uh, how old you actually feel. 40, nice. I mean, you've also already matured and uh, evolved to uh, H10 law, so um, I'm clearly behind the times. Nice, I think we'll, we'll figure out who got closest um, as the winner. Um, yeah, 2024, H, H20 law. Cool, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the enthusiasm, everyone. Um, cool, uh, question three, Zach. So this is a nice poke at the collective force of PNF and PNI for taking so long to do this. I think everyone will be even a little bit surprised about how long this has taken, but yeah, how many days from the first wrap pocket post in the forum until the launch of the bridge and wrap pocket token um, this year. I'll give everyone 10, 15 seconds to guess. Oh, people are actually way off. Quite funny. Cool. I'm going to say the answer now. And once Nick stops typing, Cool. Um, it's actually 1,036 days, would you believe? The first post for App Pocket was on the 2nd of December 2020. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. But we did it. We did it. Okay. Is that <laughs> a point for Ben Van, then? Um, that looks like a point for Ben Van, yeah. Nice. Cool. Question number four. This is actually quite funny and... Uh, um, we've just found this metrical area, so we're almost tempted to put it on our internal metrics or the, the public community metrics dashboard. So Fireflies AI records um, people who speak for how long and all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, who on the PNF team has the record for the longest monologue? I think we got a few more guesses to go. All right, I'll wait five more seconds to see if anyone else wants to have a good go at getting this. A nice diversity of answers, actually. Actually, Shane, Shane's is a good one. I actually don't know if we have this metric because uh, Nelson's time zone, he isn't in a ton of our calls. Yes, but I'll, I'll finish it off here. And it is Jack. <laughs> yeah. I think um, I've got Jack continually comes up trumps, I think, for all this monologue. So uh, at least in, in recent times. Um, I mean, I'm sure all for a very good reason. But uh, yeah, Jack Jack has been the winner. Um, Nine and a half minutes. Five, Zach. Nine and a half minute monologue, <laughs> yeah. just, just so everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, quickly, now, fifth question. So, who are the two fastest talkers within PNF? And a bonus point if you can guess their average word per minute. Um, just so everyone is aware, Ben, but there's also a number, number of member of PNF. Um, of course, Nelson is another call, but another member to consider. But yeah, who are the two fastest talkers? And um, we'll give it another 10. And of course, get a bonus point if you can get nice big end. All right, we're certainly going to get a few half points here. Um, don't see anyone else type typing, but yeah, the two fastest talkers within PNF are myself and Zach. 
Yeah. Dermot, we're, I'm getting a little robot Maybe from Dermot. Is anybody else getting him cut out? Yeah. Uh, Dermot, you're cutting out a little bit here. Um, I don't know if you can move closer to a router or something. Is that, is that a bit better? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is this is a little better. bit better? Much better. Cool. Yeah, sorry about that. Nobody wants the robot voice. Um, <laughs> I think Harry nailed it. Um, yeah, did you hear me uh, say the answer, uh, Zach? Uh, not really. You might just re redo it. Okay. Yeah, I was just saying the winner, uh, or the, the winner, definitely not the winner, but the two fastest talkers in PNF are myself and Zach, um, speaking at 210 words per minute, which I don't know if you know the average, Zach, but that seems a bit too high, and we should probably uh, both... We'll maybe work on slowing down for our community, if not our own team. I think the average uh, human speaks closer to like 160. So um, we're we're one one and a half times. You don't need to speed up the the video for us. <laughs> nice one. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening to podcasts at two x too much. Clearly, um, cool. I think question number six. So yeah, so this is quite a funny one. I think uh, I don't actually know if the people who have these tattoos are on the call, but um, the number of people within the community with a pocket tattoo, and as a bonus, I don't think anyone is going to get this unless you have some really good internal knowledge. Uh, how many logo changes each person with a tattoo has gone through to date, and uh, and how annoyed might you think they might be if uh, another logo uh, change is about to happen? Oh, yeah, to add this question, it's um, since they had the tattoo, yeah. So I think... Uh... Nice, some great answers here. Um, I see Ramiro typing, so I think we'll, we'll give a few more seconds for uh, him to come in with his answer. Ooh, nice. I think Blade's gone, gone, gone on the under. <laughs> okay so the <laughs> answer is two and i think pabell had a pocket tattoo right at the genesis i think this might be back in 2017 2018 so i'm speculating a little bit but my understanding from jack is that he has gone through three logo chain changes um mike made what he thought was the very uh thoughtful and uh long-term choice to get his pocket tattoo i think more recently i think probably in the last 18 months or so uh, so he is about to go through his first logo change and <laughs> making his tattoo a little bit out of date but you know tattoos aren't forever anyway so it's only a it's only a small detail <laughs> <laughs> cool um question number seven This is a good one, actually. Um, so number of distinct individuals or organizations actively contributing towards our ecosystem ambitions. And to be really clear, PNF is considered as one. Grove is, if you're, connected, if you're, part, if you're employed or paid by Grove, you are, you are one as well. Um, so yeah, number of distinct kind of, I guess, contributors, you can think about it. So if you're contributing as part of an organization, that's one. Contributing on an individual basis, that's also uh, another one. All oh, right, boom, I'm going to have to kind of call it there. Blade has got it off the bat, 17. Yeah, nice work. Really, really good. I mean, I, I'm not too sure what the number was 12 months ago, but from everything just off, like, off, 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 the, off, off the top of my head, I think this must have at very least doubled. So um, it's a pretty cool metric, and it's definitely something that we really want to grow because... Actually, the cool thing about our sockets and our pops, there's actually a nice bit of churn. People contribute and they and they go away. And this is actively those actively contributing, open actively open sockets, actively delivering towards a pop or an open RFP. So yeah, seventeen is a really cool metric, I think. Um, yeah. So well done, Blade. Um, question number eight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, who are the two non-PNF people in the top five? For most likes on the forum in the last 12 months. Mm. 
we'll give you the top five as well. I mean, we might even try on a bonus point if you can actually get the the, the other three of the top five. But uh, I think focus on those not in PMF. <clears throat> give it a few more seconds, but um, good answer so far. <laughs> Pseudo doesn't uh, comment on the forum enough, right? You have some people who are optimizing for certain forums, Discord or Twitter, it seems. Cool. I'll let Blade give his answer, and then I'll I'll share with everyone. Didn't use uh, Nix, actually. Um, probably should have. Um, but no, that, that's a great question, Blade. Now, these, these are all... Um, crowdsourced within PNF. Uh, Zach gave quite a few, and amongst uh, others in the team. Although Blade, it would be fun remember, to run. Uh, I remember it was already typed. To run, yeah, to run it through and see if you get the correct answers. Like, can it tell you who the fastest <laughs> yeah, yeah, PNF yeah, true. is? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, some of this is definitely off chain um, and off the internet. Um, cool. Yeah, the answer here actually is Shane Romero, and the top five is Jack is the number one for most likes. Second is Shane. Third is Ben. Fourth is myself. And fifth is Ramiro. So yeah, well done to all in the top five. And that's uh, looking forward to next year's quiz and we'll see how much that has changed. Harry got both points on that one. Huh? <laughs> nice, Jack. Um, cool. Last question. Yeah, he's, uh, he's killing it. Uh, I'm not running a, a, an ongoing tally, but... Um, we got some people doing pretty well at the moment. Yeah, cool. Quick fire round question. Who has the biggest bags? <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I wish. Ask a few people typing. <laughs> it's been a long year, Jack, right? <laughs> and it's been a long day for Jack. Poor guy uh, did it pretty much an all nighter to make a couple of important calls today. So, uh... <laughs> Tony RIP. <laughs> well, I'm going to jump in once Ben um, finishes speaking. I'm going to finish typing even. <laughs> Particularly as he's mentioned in the last comment. Oh, not let's say. Well, actually, it's a trick question. Santa has the biggest bags. <laughs> so, yeah, it started and finished with another good dad joke. So, uh, you all lost. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, thanks all that was that was that was fun and and maybe I think as we look to mix it up with you know bi-weekly monthly quarterly whatever it is it'll be fun to maybe if there's a community to run different quizzes or completely different formats whether we want to do games nights or or anything else I know I'm a very average chess player on chess.com if you ever wanted to do something like that but yeah there's probably some fun things we can think about uh, in the new year for different kind of formats um, for community calls but yeah I think games would be fun right um, and yeah, maybe when we're all together, we can actually do a, a games night of Brown. But um, cool, I'll finish up because I realize we're over time, and I'll try and be as quick as possible. So um, yeah, I'm very of everyone for, for staying on and joining us and participating. But I want to go to the next slide, Zach. Um, yes, yeah, so I think robot again, before we just adds up. look to fit. Oh. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's, cut me out. It seems like it's better now. Let me know if this doesn't get better. It's better. Cool. Yeah, I think just want to finish up with yeah, to look look back a little bit, uh, look where we've come from. Um, and by the way, these emojis look very very different to how they looked on my slide, but yeah, quite funny. Um, I think it was important to kind of look back at where we came from. Obviously, Pocket initially was founded in 2017, but the first time anyone actually really came aware of pocket and actually got to touch and feel it and ultimately the community really started to be properly formed in earnest was in 2020 and in the years since i think 20 i guess even going back to 2020 right 
infrastructure for crypto was there were some players out there, but nobody was thinking about decentralized infrastructure, and even less people were thinking about Pocket Network. Pocket launched, but ultimately most people, to be honest, didn't care or didn't even realize why it was important. In 2021, that actually really started to change. I think we had a lot of outages with some of the major RPC providers. I think people started to realize in Quark, hey, if this space is going to be as big and important as we think it all could be in terms of coordinating all of this value, um, we actually need to think about more resilient infrastructure and actually thinking about how its own and govern as well is actually super important. Then we got to 2022, and I think it's fair to say a lot was learned and mistakes were made. Things were scaled, the community scaled, they scaled. Um, ultimately, we survived. And 2023, really, I guess, at least for me, has been a kind of a story of rebirth and renewal. Um, I think we spent a lot of time getting back to our roots, aligning with our community again, realizing who we are. We are the RPC base layer and shipping some needed improvements along the way. Right? We have our pocket <laughs> after 1,086 days. We have a lot of important improvements and we've been rebuilding and also, really important to me, unlike in 2022, we have economic sustainability now, and we really have a path to make that even better over the coming year. So I guess one of the poses question of kind of what we think and are looking for for 2024 is and what that's going to bring for us. And um, yeah, I can change the next slide. Zach. Zach can change slides, yeah. Cool. Um, 2024 is about growth. and really just want to kind of say a few points about this because what makes pocket unique is our community and this is really at the heart of our strategy we're leaning into the disadvantage of our community to grow faster um bigger and ultimately to do way more and better than we ever could if we're to do it all on our own and even if the protocol succeeds in its mission to become the most reliable performant and cost-effective access layer for open data what are the odds that only one front end will serve 100 percent of the demand for API services from any open data source for every customer type in every region. And then think of it to um, front ends and 20 front ends and many more gateways. And this is really our gateway strategy. And all of these new gateways competing and collaborating just makes us all better, stronger, and increases our, our, increases our chances of success as effective. So um, when we look forward to the Shannon upgrade, this is going to unlock the full potential of the strategy. It's going to give us permissionless demand and going to give us uncapped scale. And there's no way we could achieve any of this without all of the community members contributing to Morse, the Shannon strategy, the gateway strategy even, and of course, into Shannon itself. So all of this really is a long-winded way of saying that if you've been with us all along, thank you. If you're back after some time away, welcome back. And if you're new to Talk Network, you arrived at a great time. And... Truly, while we weren't ready before, um, we are now. And yeah, so as a final sign off, LFG and happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Dermot. Aw. A little applause for you, too. Um, I've got just some final things. I know we're way past time here. So um, thank you, Dermot. Thank you, everybody who presented today. We really appreciate you. Um, obviously, you've been core and instrumental to us being so successful this year. So I'm really excited for 2024. Um, two final pieces here. Jinx couldn't make it, but he'd love for people to join the Pocket Socials Telegram channel. That's that bottom QR code. Um, it basically is a feed for anybody talking about Pocket on uh, Twitter or Reddit, I believe. Um, so join that. And then if you see that, join the discussion, like, repost, uh, quote it, tweet it, whatever you need to do. And then the top one, we're doing a final NPS. Um, just to see how we're doing as the year wraps up. So if you have uh, thoughts or opinions on how uh, the foundation is doing, that's your opportunity to rate us and give us a little bit of feedback. Um, and with that, I think we're going to wrap up here. Um, we will send out our wrap pocket to the winner of the, the quiz. We'll, we'll announce that in the channel uh, shortly after. I just got to go back through and see who won. Um, yeah, and open floor. If anybody has anything else they want to say, anything else they want to do at the end of the year, um, we'll drop all those links. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if I can do it right now. Oh, yeah, there we go. 
Um, I'll drop those links right there to join, or you can scan. And then again, um, I'll post this after. Jerry, thank you for all the work that you've done on getting these calls up on YouTube. So if anybody wants to rewatch anything, these are going to go up on YouTube. Uh, if anybody needs any edits, you have about 10 hours to get it to me before it goes up on YouTube. So cool. Thank you, everybody. Happy holidays. We'll see you in 2024. Thanks, Zach. A foreign entity has decrypted our communications. Diplomatic alert. All right. Thanks, all. Thanks, Dermot.